All right. Uh, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Get your King James Bible. Turn to Isaiah chapter 22, verse 1. The burden, the burden of the valley of vision. What aileth thee now that thou art wholly gone up to the housetops? Thou that art full of stirs, a tumultuous city, a joyous city, thy slain men are not slain with the sword, nor dead in battle. I'm not exactly sure what that means. I think it's talking about they're not dead physically, but they're dead spiritually. Perhaps. I'm not 100% sure, but I believe that's what it's referring to. When uh, a man wanted to follow Jesus, and he says, Please, Lord, let suffer me to go bury my father. And Jesus said, Let the dead bury the dead. Follow me. And I think I'm paraphrasing there, but uh, let the spiritually dead bury the physically dead, right? Uh, Thy slain men are not slain with the sword, nor dead in battle. All the rulers are fled together. They are bound by the archers. All that are found in thee are bound together, which have fled from far. Therefore, said I, look away from me. I will weep bitterly. Labor not to comfort me because of the spoiling of the daughter of my people. For it is a day of trouble and of treading down and of perplexity by the Lord God of hosts in the valley of vision, breaking down the walls and of crying to the mountains. And Elam bare the quiver with chariots of men and horsemen, and Kir uncovered the shield. And it shall come to pass that thy choicest valleys shall be full of chariots, and the horsemen shall set themselves in array at the gate. And he discovered the covering of Judah, and thou didst look in that day to the armor of the house of the, of the forest. Ye have seen also the breaches of the city of David. Now the city of David was Jerusalem people. That they are many, and ye gathered together the waters of the lower pool. And ye have numbered the houses of Jerusalem, and the houses have ye broken down to fortify the wall. So, in other words, they dismantled the houses to help build up their wall. So, now that's some desperate times, people. When you got to tear apart people's houses to, to build up the wall because you want to protect yourselves against an invading army, you got problems. Verse 11. Ye made also a ditch between the two walls for the water of the old pool, but ye have not looked but ye have not looked unto the maker thereof, neither had respect unto him that fashioned it long ago. So here it is, instead of these people repenting and honoring the Lord, they're looking to the works of their own hands, you know, which the Lord brought evil upon them because of their wickedness to punish them. But would they honor the Lord? No. No. They tore down houses to build up a wall. Oh, we're going to be safe because we're building up the wall here. Instead of getting on their hands and knees and repenting before the Lord. But ye have not looked unto the maker thereof, neither had respect unto him that fashioned it long ago. And in that day did the Lord of hosts call to weeping and to mourning and to baldness and to girding with sackcloth. That's repenting, people. And behold, joy and gladness, slaying oxen and killing sheep, eating flesh and drinking wine. Let us eat and drink. Listen to this. Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we shall die. Yeah. Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we shall die. 
And it was revealed in mine ears by the Lord of hosts. Surely this iniquity shall not be purged from you till ye die, saith the Lord God of hosts. Wow. The Lord's bringing judgment. Uh, America, are you paying attention? Europe, are you paying attention? No. Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. We shall die. Oh, yeah. Verse 15. Thus saith the Lord God of hosts, Go, get thee unto this treasure, even unto Shibna, which is over the house, and say, What hast thou here? And whom hast thou here that thou hast hewed thee out a sepulchre here, as he that heweth him out a sepulchre on high, and that graveth and habitation for himself in a rock. Behold, the Lord will carry thee away with a mighty captivity and will surely cover thee. Well, that's what happened, people. Babylon came and took them, uh, killed the soldiers, and took a lot of the people into captivity. And let's face it, people are more useful as slaves for than they are dead. Yeah, I mean, you know, why waste an arrow or a bullet on them when you could turn them into slaves and have them tend your fields? You know, planting your gardens and taking care of your vineyards and your orchards. That's what that's what happened with Judah. They were taken to captivity. Behold, the Lord will carry thee away with a mighty captivity and will surely cover thee. Verse 18. He will surely violently turn and toss thee like a ball into a large country. There shalt thou die, and there the chariots of thy glory shall be the shame of thy Lord's house. And I will drive thee from thy station and from thy state, shall he pull thee down. And it shall come to pass in that day that it will call my servant Eliakim the son of Hilkiah, and I will clothe him with the robe of with thy robe, and strengthen him with thy girdle. And I will commit thy government into his hand, and he shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. And the key, and the key of the house of David will I lay upon his shoulder, so he shall open, and none shall shut, and he shall shut, and none shall open. Now when you read the book of Revelation, it talks about Christ having the key of David. Remember, Christ said he was the door. You know, you got to have a key to open the door, right? And that door was Christ. Verse 20, uh, 23. And I will fasten him, him as a nail in a sure place, and he shall be for a glorious throne to his father's house. And they shall hang upon him all the glory of his father's house, the offspring and the issue, all vessels of small quantity, from the vessels of cups, even to all the vessels of flagons. In that day, saith the Lord of hosts, shall the nail that is fastened in the sure place be removed, and be cut down, and fall, and the burden that was upon it shall be cut down, for the Lord hath spoken it. In John chapter 10, verse 7, Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. Let's go to Revelation chapter 3, and we're going to close this out. Jesus speaking, verse 1, And unto the angel of the church in Sardis write, These things saith he that hath the seven spirits of God, and the seven stars. I know thy works, that thou hast a name, that thou livest, and art dead. Be watchful, and strengthen the things which remaineth that are ready to, to die. For I have not found thy works perfect before God. Remember, therefore, how 
thou hast received and heard, and hold fast and repent. Now remember something. A lot of famous TV preachers will tell you that repent means to change your mind and have faith in God. Repent of your unbelief. But uh, and, and that's what they tell you repent means. It means to change your unbelief to belief. It doesn't mean to repent of your sin. That's what they will tell you. But remember something. Here Jesus is telling a church to repent. So is Jesus telling this church, this believing church, to repent of their unbelief? No. He's telling them to repent of the works of their hands. Duh. Remember, therefore, how thou hast received and heard, and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. Thou hast a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. People that believe in eternal security and once saved, always saved, will never read this verse. I mean, if your name could be blotted out of the book of life, that totally blows those uh, theological whatever. It just blows it out of the water, period. If your name could be blotted out of the book of life, eternal security and once saved, always saved, is heresy. But, you know, what you do with this verse is up to you. I'm just... I'm just a teacher. I'm not a, I don't claim to be a prophet speaking for the Lord. And if I'm wrong, I'll have to give an account one day. He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. But I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Here's the punchline. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things saith he that is holy, he that is true. He hath the key of David. Didn't we read about that in Isaiah? Oh yeah. He that hath the key of David, he that openeth and no man shutteth and shutteth and no man openeth. Got to have a key to the door, right? And that's Christ. Verse 8, I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. Verse 9, one of my favorite verses in the whole Bible. <clears throat> Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. Uh, you could attend John Hagee's church for 40 years and you will never hear this verse read. Yeah. Guess what, John Hagee? Those people you claim are God's chosen people are going to come and worship before my feet. Verse 10. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world, to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Hold fast. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. All right, people, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and his only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. In his precious name, amen.